Hello, Bells of Studio, and welcome to today's 20-minute session. It is a strength focus session today, and we're gonna be going lateral. We have some lateral movement with lateral lunging. You will need a, I brought my little mid-century modern side table in today to show you, you can really use anything as a prop sometimes. Something that you can put your hand on for three-point rows. So this could be a bench, it could be a chair, it could be a mini side table like I have here. Uh, you will need that for your rows. And if you don't have something, I'm definitely gonna give you a modification for the three-point row that you can do with nothing else but your kettlebell. So today's the day that you should have a moderate bell. It's a one bell type of class. As always, if you have access to a lot of kettlebells, keep them close. And this is one of those classes that you could do with a dumbbell. So if you don't have a lot of kettlebells and you have more dumbbells, this is the perfect place that you've landed today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna uh, begin some of this lateral movement with what I like to call a lateral toe drag. So what it's gonna look like, we're gonna root down through one side, touch our toe out, moving ourselves in this kind of lateral motion, and then push through our front leg to bring our toe in. So I'm just thinking a light touch of my toe, push to come in. I don't wanna overly shoot my butt out to the side. I still wanna think of kind of moving it back, keeping my chest forward like a squat. It's kind of like a single leg squat. So let's go ahead and try about 10 reps here. I'm gonna give you around 30 seconds to do each side. So if you don't quite get 10, it's all good, but we'll switch at that 30 second mark just so we stay together and on time. You will need your bell for quadruped passes next. We'll work our core a bit. And then optional bell for baby Turkish get-ups um, or a regular Turkish get-ups. So that's what you have going on in your warm-up today. So let's go ahead and start it out with those toe drags. We'll go three, two, and one. So I'm going to tap and then pull the toe in. I want to make sure that my toes are in line with my standing leg toes. You can face your toes out a little bit if you prefer to squat with a slight turnout, that's cool. Go for that. Try to see if um, your moving leg, you can keep the toes slightly turned in when you do this. We're gonna try to push through that front leg to bring, or I should say that down leg, to bring the toes in. And you should really feel this maybe in your booty here, maybe in your inner thigh on that standing leg. You're gonna be here for three, two, and one. You might also feel it in your feet, quite honestly. Honestly, this takes a lot of kind of grip work with your foot. We'll go right into that other side. And it really helps to think of lifting up your arch or pushing down the uh, ball of your foot really hard to lift up your arch. So just take these ones one by one, booty goes back. We're getting a little bit again of that squatty position. You can sometimes think of a lateral lunge like a single leg squat. So all of our body is kind of in this squat pattern when we're at the bottom of this one. We're gonna be here for three, two, and one. Good morning, evening, or afternoon with those, right? Feeling all the things. So let's go ahead and take your light kettlebell. And we're gonna go quadruped passes. If the passes don't work for you, you're gonna mimic a pass by just reaching under and getting a little bit of rotation in this quadruped. If you can pass your bell side to side, we're gonna try that out. You're gonna grab it with the opposite hand of where the bell is placed. So let's go ahead and start it out. We're gonna take 10 passes together. We'll go in three, two, and one. So body should feel like it's in a tabletop, knees hovering a few inches. So go ahead, just reach. You can kind of turn your upper body to make that reach happen. I'm gonna hit five right here. We're gonna try to really set the bell, drag it across your body. We'll go for eight, knees just gently hover. Oh, I put it a little far, nine <laughs> and 10. If you move it a little too far and you get off balance, it's all good, we're in the warm up here. So you have the option to take either a regular Turkish get up, if you know how to do that, or five baby Turkish get ups. This can be weighted with a kettlebell, this can be unweighted, whatever feels good to you. We're just gonna roll through these. I'm gonna give you just about a minute and a half to finish. Baby get ups, I'll tell you when we hit about 45 seconds in um, our position here. So let's go ahead, go into it. Clock is on in three, two, and one. So we're gonna remember that our hand comes up, stays on the bent leg side if we're doing our full get up. You can do these with body weight as I'm doing here. You can also do them with your bell, which I prefer, or your dumbbell. So we're just gonna try moving under the bell. Once you get to this position, you can flip the leg like I just did there or turn to face the way that you were originally. 
So I'm just gonna flip, come back into my hinge. I'm working extra hard to move underneath my bell or to keep my arm nice and straight, no matter if I have a bell there or not. If you're doing baby get-ups, go ahead and give yourself a switch in three, two, and one. I forgot to show you the baby, but I think you guys know them by this point in the program. We're just rolling here. So start your other get-up on your opposite side if you are um, doing that one. So just pass through it. Make sure it's nice and moderate weight here. Baby get-ups, I want you to make sure you're actually rolling over. You're not punching in front of you. The arm should be straight up. We're just working on that roll, not assisted by our feet. So we're getting that action of rolling over. Should be a lot of core in that baby get-up. Once we get into this lateral lunge set, um, you'll wanna make sure that you have, again, a moderate weight bell with you and you're ready to pull a little bit. And I'm gonna show you a little version, we'll finish up here in three, two, and one, that you can do for some vertical pull work with just one kettlebell, which is sometimes kind of hard to do. So get that bell out and we'll get started with our intervals in just we a have second. some 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off intervals to work through today. We're doing everything three times through. We're going to start with lateral lunges with a suitcase hold of our kettlebell. We're going to do each side in intervals one and two. I'll demo those for you guys right now. So the goal here is going to be to hold the kettlebell opposite of the leg you're going to step with. So we're actually going to step out. We're gonna move that bell towards our instep, then we're gonna push and step back in. So notice how the bell kind of moves to the outside of my opposite foot. Something that can work really well is line your feet up and to make sure you're in a good position for this is if you have a line on the floor near you or where your mat is, stand against it and try to keep your feet in that same way because sometimes I notice people step back or turn the toes in different ways and it kind of gets you off center for really moving laterally. The goal is that you feel some of this in your inner thigh and you might feel some glute medias here or even some booty, maybe a little quad. Everyone's gonna be different and you might notice your sides are different. So after we do each side of those, we're gonna use our bell for eccentric pull down. So we're gonna work the down part of a two hand press. So imagine you're pulling yourself up on a pull up bar, chest to bar, and then you're pulling your elbows down into your sides. You're gonna go as slowly as you can on that down face. So we're gonna work the eccentric part of what would be a vertical pull. Even though we're not technically pulling the kettlebell, this part is really gonna work some of those muscles in the same way. If you have access to a pull up bar, you could take some eccentric chin ups or pull ups, just letting yourself lower as slowly as you can from the bar. Uh, the third thing, so you have two sides for this one, is your three point row. So you'll use your apparatus. Here's my little table. I'm gonna push my hand into it and bring my booty down. I'm gonna turn my kettlebell to the side slightly with my hand on the front part of the handle so it's a bit angled. And as I push and lift my chest, I'm gonna pull here. So this variation is awesome to really get a strong pull motion because you have some support. If you do have a heavier bell, you could go heavy here today in the three-point row. And that's it, we're gonna go through everything three times. So go ahead and get your bell out for your lateral lunge and get ready. We're gonna start by stepping with our right side having the bell in the left hand. Give me about five seconds here, and then we're gonna go for it. So you're just gonna step out, chest stays up. We'll go three, two, and one. So I step, move that bell to my instep, and then step back over. So when I get here, the bell might touch the floor, it might not. I'm gonna try to anchor down with that front foot, and I can slightly turn my belly button towards my front leg side and get a little bit of rotation, pulling my hip back. Right here is where we really should feel the groin and inner thigh. You're gonna be on this side for five, four, three, two, and one. If that felt like a little bit too much, you can try doing this with body weight. You can also try holding your kettlebell here at your chest and going through it. You can also try holding the kettlebell in both hands here and going through it. So we can eliminate that single side control needed for this one. You have just about 15 seconds. And if this feels easy, this is the day today, guys, that you can go with kind of a heavy weight for lower and how we're set up for upper. So you should increase your weight if this first round does not feel like it challenges you. Okay, let's go ahead, get your other side in three, two, and one. So these ones are kind of similar to when we do weighted hip shifts, if you remember those ones. So the weighted hip shift is here when we're learning to load that hip. This one is just adding that step 
and then the push. So my inner thigh is really getting a lot of work here. Very important that we move laterally in our weight training practice because we don't do this often in real life and it's really important for us to be strong in our adductors. They're gonna help your squats and help you feel better and move better. Three, two, and rest. That eccentric pull down is coming up next. So we're gonna try to stand up tall, pull the elbows down as we squeeze into that kettlebell, nice and tight. Okay, bell is gonna come between your feet here. If you wanna take a practice rep during these rest breaks or try to set yourself up and kind of play around, it could even be your lunge position. You play around with it, go for it. Use this time because our class is short to get in a little bit of practice if you need it. Okay, we'll pick your bell up. Three, two, and one. It comes to the chest, your butt should be tight. We're gonna push it straight overhead. Now start bringing your elbows forward and push your hands into the kettlebell, pull it into your chest. We're gonna go up, we're gonna try to come down for five, Five, four, three, two, and one. Very good. See if you can move it slightly forward and then pull it down. Five, four, three. Push your hands into it. Two and one. Time for one more up. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bell comes down. You should feel a little shaky in these lat muscles, these big muscles on the sides of your back when you're coming down into that. Try to relax your face as much as you can. This is like a tense, a tense class. I want you to see if you can put a smile on your face through part of this at least and have a little bit of fun with it because there's a lot of tension needed for all these moves today. Definitely a strength focus set, not quite a cardio set today. Okay, here we go. Let's go your first side three point row. Three, two, and one. So my hand comes down. My shoulder does not need to be over my wrist here. I'm going to turn my kettlebell. It's between my legs. I'm going to push down and push as I pull. So I want to think of push into that bench. Push into that bench. It's okay if you're a little higher here. And if you don't have a bench, I want you to just pretend like you do. I want you to make a fist and pull the weight in a hinge row, trying to get as tight as you can. You're here for three, two, and one. I definitely want you to try to aim for a rep count of maybe eight to 10 in these pulls. So that could help you forecast if your weight's a little too light, if you're just cranking them out and getting like 12 to 15 in 30 seconds. Little secret, you probably have to go up in your weight. So today's class, I'm gonna give you guys a little story time about strength training. And this is inspired by um, some recent things that have happened in my personal training, my life in particular. We'll go three, two, and one other side. So. I'm in this moment in time, 39 years old. So I have about six months until I turn 40. And about three months ago, I started working with a trainer and the goal for me was to really pack on some size, like try to put on some serious muscle. Part of this involves eating. I'm having to eat a lot of food. We'll go three, two, and one, specifically a lot of protein, a lot of carbohydrates to fuel the muscle growth. But I've been training in more of a bodybuilding style mixed in with teaching my classes like this. And the cool thing about it is I've really said, I wanna to try to push it till 40 and see how much I can really change my body. So essentially I'm trying to bulk. I'm trying to put on some weight. I might be, you guys might notice, I don't know, you can leave me in the comments. Um, I'm trying to put on some body fat too because that happens naturally when you're trying to gain muscle and you're eating to do that. Let's go ahead, come back to the beginning. We got your lateral lunges, just don't step on your table here. We'll go three, two, and one. And you guys might be like, yo, you teach us kettlebell training, like why are you doing this other style? My personal goals just changed a little and part of it is I need, a little bit of a change from just strength, which is what we're doing here. We're working to build strength. We might not necessarily, we'll go three, two, and one, change the size of our muscles a ton or change how much we weigh when we do strength training. Our muscles just get stronger. They get more readily um, accessible for absorbing force and tension so they can exert that force when you're lifting something. So this is why people can be kind of a smaller stature and lift really heavy weights. And maybe you've seen people train and lift weights. Let's get your other side in three, two, and one. Maybe you've seen people training and you're like, how does that like small person lift that heavy weight? Or it could be something like 
somebody that is not very defined and muscular is lifting an enormous amount of weight and they look like a big person that isn't maybe what you would imagine a professional athlete looking like. These are all examples of strength training versus what I'm focusing on a little bit in my personal stuff right now with hypertrophy for the time being, which is trying to make my muscles actually bigger. So rest in three, two, and one. The whole culmination of story time is that if you're someone that doesn't necessarily want to put on size in your body, like visibly grow the size of your muscles, but you want to look really good, develop lean muscle, so your muscle maybe shows through, um, and you're really healthy, you're really strong, you feel mobile, you feel kind of unbreakable, strength training is what you do. We'll go three, two, and one. And it's not to say that all these things don't exist together. We're going to start these eccentric pull downs and get it to your chest. It's not to say that these things all exist independently because if you're strength training and eating well, you're going to notice body composition changes for sure. You'll notice that you are building muscle. You might just not be bulking up like Arnold. So if you're a woman that is doing these classes and you're afraid of bulking or adding muscle, it's really hard to do that. You'll go three, two, and one, and it's probably not gonna happen if you're eating in a surplus to do that, and you're pushing some really heavy, or I would say moderately heavy sets for a ton of reps. In strength training like this, we typically do less reps and more sets to build that resiliency in our muscles to make them really strong. So there are just different types of training, and I feel like I really have to make the point to let you guys know the difference between them. We'll go um, first side three-point row in three, two, and one, because depending on what your goal is, you might want to adopt a different training style. And training, again, does not live in a vacuum. So why I love kettlebell training so much is that you sort of get the best of both worlds. You get a lot of conditioning, a lot of strength, some opportunities for hypertrophy, which you could say these rows could be something like that with a higher rep count in the intervals we're doing, three, two, and one, and a lot of chance to build power. So if you're someone that's a runner, if you're doing anything like playing tennis or pickleball or anything athletic as an adult, this hip strength we work on in ballistics underweight is so good for you. It's gonna help you move better on the courts or in your races. The kettlebell swing kind of mimics your position when you're running. So kettlebell training is so well-rounded. Let's go ahead, get your other side in three, two, and one. And you might have really noticed since you've started kettlebell training, just feeling like you can move better, feeling like you look better, maybe you're sleeping better. It all comes into play here. And out of everything, I think, and this is as a trainer that's been doing this for 10 or so years professionally, that strength training is the most sustainable and has the most long-term benefit for us, especially as we age to maintain our muscle. If anything else you can do out there, three, two, and rest. We have one more round together of this stuff. Sometimes I get flack because I do tell women that you know, a lot of us don't have millions of hours of time. And if you do and you really love fitness, then by all means, do whatever you want in fitness. But strength training, really, if you want to do all that stuff long term and you want to look and feel your best, is like the glue that holds it all together. So in an ideal world, let's go three, two, and one. I think that people should be strength training three days per week. And that's part of why we do the structure that we do on Bells Up Studio. That gives you another two days if you wanna run, if you wanna go to Pilates, if you're doing yoga, if you wanna add in some more strength training or do a different style of strength training. I think personally, after I finish this bodybuilding set because I don't see myself doing it forever. I definitely don't want to compete in it or anything like that. We'll go three, two, and one. I think a perfect mix could be some intense, heavy hypertrophy sessions twice a week and then strength training the other days of the week um, mixed in with some cardiovascular activity. So that could be a working mix for me, um, maybe for you too, I don't know. But this could be a good time for you after we finish this class to think about the why behind your fitness life. What are you doing this for? Let's go three, 
two and one? Is it to look better? Is it to be healthy? Is it to keep up with your kids? What's your North Star for your goals? Because usually when you're able to stick to something like this, those goals have to be for you. The goals can't really be for your spouse or your family or your friends or what other people want for you. You have to get really clear on why you're showing up. Three, two, and one. And if you do that, it's going to make it so much easier for you to have that inherent drive to train and feel your best versus relying on showing up for an instructor or just taking a class because you like the music or being inconsistent or getting into something that you don't really like per se because you think it's gonna give you X, Y, Z result and maybe that result doesn't happen. Let's go ahead for our last set of eccentric pull downs. Three, two, and one. I see this sometimes with personal training clients. I have for sure over the years of people that want to use things like running to solve weight loss goals. And a lot of times you just don't know what you don't know. So figuring out what you actually want to do and then getting help matching your training plan with that result is going to save you so much time, heartache, and get you into a really consistent schedule. I think physical therapists, three, two, and one, do this so well with people because it's almost this medical situation where you have to show up and make improvements and you get into a schedule and you have a goal and you have a reason for being there. So what's your reason for being here? And it might just be, I, gotta, I know I gotta move my body because I sit all day. I know I gotta move my body because I wanna be able to hike, run, travel, play pickleball, do all these things for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And that could be enough to get you out of bed every morning and with your kettlebell. Okay, let's go ahead, hit your last set of three point rows. Clock is on here in three two, and one. Don't sleep on this little turn your kettlebell trick. I started doing this in um, videos and just in my normal life practice because it makes it so much easier to pull your elbow back instead of holding it at the top and pulling your shoulder up into your ear because if you get like tightness in your trap up in your neck from this movement, you're probably pulling too much up versus thinking back and that's what we want. Three, two, and rest. Last side, our strength set is done, and you guys get to go about your day knowing that you did something very positive for your health, no matter what your goal is in your class today. So let's roll our shoulders back, come into position, get ready to hit our last set of pulls. Left hand comes down, let's turn the kettlebell to its side. Three, two, and one. Ch Keep going through this. I do have to tell you guys, we're gonna be here for another five, four, three, two, and one. When I started working with my coach, one of the first things he asked me was, are you gonna be comfortable like gaining some body fat? And at first I thought, am I? Um, I'm on camera all the time, building kettlebell works like in a sports bra and tight pants so you guys can actually see how my body moves, right? And I eventually decided like, fuck it. This is what it's about. You gotta take some risks, you gotta not be afraid to change. Don't be afraid of becoming the person you wanna be because of other people or because of fear. Fear of change or who that could be or failing at it. And with that, that's my TED Talk for today. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this 20 minute set and story time got you through it. I will see you in our next 20 minute class here on Bells Up Studio. Remember, get real, get strong. Bells up, bye.